It's not every day that you're surrounded by culinary legends. It's Tony Boy Escalante and AC Agra. I'm flanked by them right here. Well, kinda. There they are, flanking me. But what I want to know, is fine dining really dying, like what they say? Or is it still able to sustain its life? Hi, I'm Chef Rob Pengson, and I'm all about food, culinary arts, and hospitality. Come join me in my experience at Antonio's PGA. So the first thing I noticed, the warm greeting, it was raining. And what I really liked was that people, the guards especially, they came in with umbrellas right away, the moment I parked. And that's what service is, you know, the moment. You don't have to wait to be asked. You have to do it right away. And then when I went in, the reception was very wonderful. Professional staff, uh, prim and proper, kind of like what you'd expect in a place where if you wanted to have a fine culinary experience, and then, of course, it's uh, in PGA Cars, so you see there's cars all around earlier. But this is their lounge or their bar, their pre-bar, I would say. And uh, it's really wonderful because you see a lot of pre-bars in Europe because they have the luxury of space. But here in the Philippines, we rarely have the luxury of space, especially if you're in a high-traffic area where all your target customers are. So the luxury of having a pre-bar or a lounge area where you can have a cocktail before they bring you to your table uh, for me, that's uh, five stars right there. And as I go up, I'm um, sharing with you the view. Uh, that's the view from the pre-bar going up. Uh, what can I say? I started my career in fine dining. I love the white linens. It's very impractical for most restaurants now. And uh, the fact that you're able to provide linen service to guests, well, you know what? It just, it's very nostalgic. It's very wonderful for me. It's extremely beautiful because uh, it's something that's dying. Now it's all paper menus and, and whatnots. So having to be able to dine specially this way every now and then, uh, it's truly a wonderful experience and I believe it's worth every peso. Uh, so here we take a look at the menu. Uh, here I am filming it twice. And uh, I, don't, I didn't drink wine or any alcohol for this particular visit. So let's see. Uh, what I'm going to pair with my food. Uh, so since there's no wine, but they have a wonderful wine list, I decided to go with what pairs with every food. So no alcohol for this guy because I'll have football later. Soccer, that is to you uh, Americans. And what I chose was something that will go well with the meal. Sparkling water goes with everything. But they sure have a good wine list. But then now I shut up and let's listen to the man himself. <laughs> Uh, hello, hey, Chef. Thank you so much for coming to the table. Yes. Chef, it's a pleasure. So, Salamat, guys. Chef, I would like to shake your hand because you were once an alumni, but now you're one of my inspirations. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're my inspiration. And sure, Charles, an excellent yes, service. Charles. Yes. Charles. Yes. Excellent. I remember. Nandun ako noon sa Escriba. Sa Escriba. So, um, five. Alam niyo five portions of what? That was a big deal back then. Oh, to cook foie gras? Yeah. Oh. Well, you were a student. It happens, right? SA lang ako nun eh. Oh. Diba? Mm. Uh, usually Saturday yan eh. Napak up ko. Oh. Tapos, nagalit ka, pero wala ang sinabing kahit ano. Nagalit si Chef, chef Sunshine. Wala ang sinabing kahit ano. I just realized na, oh shit, I fucked up. Kasi nag-melt lahat ng foie gras. Okay. And after that, <laughs> Thanks, Chef AC Agra. Uh, so next, we proceeded to food. I got sourdough with my butter. And then I asked uh, what this hole was in the napkin. See that hole? It's for the button if you want to put it on your shirt. Old school. I love old school. I just love old school. And of course, the guy at me had to order one of the best for me. Best steak tartars I've had in the whole world. I ordered steak tartar everywhere I go. And Antonio's has arguably top five ever, all time. I tried to outdo the steak tartare. Maybe I did once, maybe I did twice. But uh, Antonio's is still, wow. I just love the steak tartare. Uh, although I eat it with the regular bread, I had one butter crostini, uh, not the rest. And then later on, I had this wonderful soup of uh, sunchoke. 
So delicious sunchok soup, and that's my thigh with a droplet of water. Because I'm not a very good vlogger, right? I'm just starting out. So, so uh, please. And more photo ops with the legends. And after they left, I went to take a look around again. And then thank you, Chef AC. I didn't order a vegan dish, but Chef AC, uh, thank you with compliments. I hope the food costs doesn't go up. They gave me this wonderful cauliflower dish, which ended up becoming my favorite dish of the entire lunch. I should have eaten it with the steak tartare, right? Uh, earlier also I had a soup, which I mentioned. But this cauliflower dish was so good. It's roasted cauliflower. I think it had tahini, a little bit of fresh peanut butter, some cauliflower puree, definitely some herb oil. And like I said, carnivore. So I had classic steak rossini invented by August Escoffier. Uh, beef tenderloin with foie gras. Um, and some gratin dauphinois. Is that right? Steak rossini. Or is steak rossini the one with the crostini? I forget. But this is a... Filet mignon with a little berries on top, some delicious sauce. And what I did was I ate it with the delicious cauliflower. And since I was on, car on carnivore keto, because I'm trying to get fit for the football match, is I only ate the top of the gratin, which had Gruyere cheese. And I paired this with a wonderful vintage that is very sacrilegious. But then, hey man, so you just gotta do you. I'm authentically me. I don't wanna drink early. I want to be healthy for my football game. It's Coke Zero, no sugar. Just a little guilty pleasure to go with my steak. <laughs> uh, I asked specifically to put it in the wine glass. They don't normally put it in the wine glass. And the reason why I do that is because it's fun. So to answer the question, is fine dining dying? People are saying it. Rene Redzepi says it's unsustainable. Robuchan gave up his stars. All many, many, many Michelin stars are saying that fine dining is dying. Well, I'm going to tell you this. In my opinion, I believe that the luxury of experiencing fine dining should be enjoyed by humanity every now and then uh, because it's just good for the soul. Uh, it's the epitome of good art. It's the epitome of a stellar service. It's the epitome of teamwork in the kitchen and the front of house. And when all those things come together to provide you with a really, really amazing meal and then a really, really amazing experience, uh, I say it's worth it for the human experience. But since I also teach entrepreneurship, it would be good to know. I just wanted to share that I teach a food MBA aside from culinary arts. And these are the things that we talk about in class. How do you make it sustainable? And if you look at what the Antonio's group are doing, they're branching out into cafes. Uh, they had a high-end brand, Antonio's, and now they're putting out their cafes, Antonio's Breakfast. And this is what they're spreading like wildfire. And this is a good scalable concept because based on all stats, cafes are the future. And anyways, I didn't have any more videos, so I wanted to end the rest of my, uh, the rest of my vlog with these things. I hope you uh, enjoyed the effort of me vlogging. I am an amateur cameraman. I have terrible audio. I'm literally using the audio of my phone. I have the help of my hands or the people around me when I vlog. So I hope you enjoyed my feature of Antonio's PJ Cars. I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to Chef AC Agra's story. He's my alumni before, but now he's one of my chef heroes. Tony Boy Escalante, one of the reasons I became a chef. So to be able to experience there, you can see him all smiles. Although obviously this is somewhere else. And thanks so much for watching. And if you like it, like, subscribe, share, comment, and uh, just do your thing. So whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Keep being real. And I'll see you again soon. On to the next one. Ciao.